Hello, my name is Mark Coonrad. I'm the unit historian for the 3rd Battalion, 12th Infantry Regiment. The 3rd of the 12th was a light infantry battalion that served in the 4th Infantry Division in Vietnam between 1966 and 1970. Today I'd like to talk about January 15th of 1969 and what the battalion was up to. We'll go into the area of operations, uh, where the individual elements were located, and what their primary mission was for the day. But before we do that, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory on the 3rd of the 12th. The 3rd of the 12th actually shipped out to Vietnam from Fort Lewis, Washington uh, in September of 1966. They spent from September 66 to April of 67 operating in Phu Yen province on the coast uh, based out of Tui Hua base camp. In April of 1967, they were actually sent west to the Central Highlands where the rest of the division was. And they spent from April 67 to late uh, October, uh, early November, of 67 um, in the Pleiku province. They spent a lot of time out on the border areas here. We're heavily engaged in May of 67 in the battles that they call the nine days in May. Um, in November of 67, they were shipped up to Kantum province to Dok to, and they participated in the Battle of Dok to, uh, and spent much of 1968 in that area uh, in Operation MacArthur. At the end of 1968, they were shipped back uh, south to the Pleiku area. And on January 15th, we find them operating here uh, in this uh, highlighted area that I have. Basically, this valley that you can kind of see, this light, uh, light area between these two dark green areas, was a valley called VC Valley. Uh, and this was an area that was pretty important to the Americans because uh, the Viet Cong or the NVA could use these mountain areas as kind of a staging ground to stage attacks on Highway 19, which ran uh, west, for, uh, east from Pleiku uh, through the Mong Yang Pass to An Khe and then on to Queen An. So a major supply uh, um, route that uh, they needed to protect. So this inset map here is just a snippet from a military grid reference uh, map. Um, it's actually the Chu Arpan map sheet. That's going to be where we see that the battalion is, is uh, headquartered at um, on January 15th. And we'll just get into that a little deeper here. So on January 15th, the battalion headquarters is at a fire base uh, southwest of the uh, western ridgeline. So again, thinking of that map you just saw, this is VC Valley. Um, this is that western ridgeline. This is the eastern ridgeline. So the fire support base is here. So the fire support base has the headquarters element, HHC, um, one of the line companies, Charlie Company, uh, for perimeter security and local patrols. The recon platoon uh, is headquartered there. The mortar platoon is headquartered there. And Bravo Battery 6 of the 29th Field Artillery is headquartered there. Bravo 629 is the direct support uh, battery for the battalion. So they were armed with 505 millimeter howitzers and could provide any needed direct support um, of artillery. So we know where Charlie Company was, but we should look at the other three line companies in the battalion. Alpha Company is located here on Hill 1188, and they have a few elements that were, uh, I believe, had spent the night out uh, as kind of um, evening patrols to kind of as an early warning system um, for the company. Second platoon here, fourth platoon here, and then two short short range patrols, uh, one one and one two, are here. Bravo Company um, actually is located up here on Chuarpan, which is hill number 1551. So that, that's the height in meters. They had actually combat assaulted into this position, or actually they, their LZ the day before was right here. And that combat assault had been uh, had been cold. There was no hostile fire on the on the landing. And so they've moved up to the peak of this Chuarpan and started patrolling on their own. 
right now they just have first platoon which was located out to the west uh, down the down that steep steep face and in this little valley uh, we know about charlie company already so delta company is the last line company they are positioned all the way down here on hill 1151 and they most likely had some uh, some SRPs or ambush patrols set out, but I didn't see any reference to them uh, uh, in the log on the morning of the 15th. The other element that's out and about is the Apache recon teams. Um, Apache team four and team one located out here on the Western kind of lowlands. So the main source of uh, the information I'm gonna be sharing is taken from the S3 daily operations journals uh, for the battalion. I retrieved those from the National Archives uh, in 2021 and in 2022. And basically it's just a chronological list of events that occurred throughout the day, uh, kept track of at the battalion headquarters. So the different companies would radio in checks, uh, etc. Sometimes the information would come from above, uh, from the higher headquarters and they'd pass that information out to the companies. But basically, it's just a chronological list. There's gaps. There's things that they don't cover. And so uh, sometimes I will, there'll be an element that I'm not sure where it came from. Um, it just, you know, will kind of magically appear. And I can make some assumptions about where I think it came from. But just know that I, if there's not a grid in the log, I, I can't be certain. So the first thing that happens in the log of note is at 0315. There's actually a message from G2, which is the battalion intelligence staff. I'm sorry, the battalion, the division intelligence staff. And the message reads, usually reliable intel reveals that probable increase in enemy activity on Highway 19 east of Pleiku during the next five to six days. Notice an enemy location at BR261509 reported on 14 January 1969. So QL19, uh, if you remember on the other map, runs just north of these uh, these ri these ridge lines, um, and that grid coordinate that they mentioned is actually about 10 kilometers east of here, and maybe 10 kilometers north, so 15 or so kilometers northeast. There's a few uh, radio checks, situation negative reports uh, in the log. And then the first um, unit that begins to move at 0, 0, 0710 is the Apache teams. And it just says that Apaches one, Apache teams one and four have moved out from recon's location. So what I don't know is, does that mean that recon has another element that stayed in this position and it's just these two Apache teams that are moving out or are all of the recon elements that are at this location moving? I can't really tell. The next item of note in the log is that at 0830, um, one of the elements, and I think it's just the battalion, um, requests that a daisy cutter is dropped and they give a specific grid. They want that daisy cutter dropped um, at 118449, which is right here. Uh, and they want it dropped at first light tomorrow morning. Now a daisy cutter is a uh, bomb that was developed basically to explode at ground level or right above ground level, um, instead of like penetrating the earth and then exploding, they wanted it to explode right at ground level. So it would hopefully uh, cut down all the foliage and uh, trees in that area and, and kind of punch a area big enough uh, to make a landing zone. That's the intent. Um, I think that it, it worked with some degrees of success uh, but the foliage and jungles in Vietnam were so thick that often one was not enough. Uh, Charlie Company sends out two of its platoons from the battalion firebase to start some scouting. Um, and Recon at 0845 finds, makes the first report of the day. So at 0845 Recon, um, there they've moved here at uh, 053397 finds a ton of rice, one ton of rice and two hooches or, or um, basically um, it says it says hooches. So that could be any just like a bamboo um, structure of some type. And that gives a six by nine dimensions and also a small trail running east to west and lightly used. So 
uh, oftentimes, you know, when people talk about Vietnam and they're and they and they think about like the pictures that come to their head are, you know, these firefights in thick jungle or or you know assaults up a uh, up a mountainside or or even you know street fighting like occurred during Tet of 1968. But you know, in my talking to many Vietnam veterans, often their days consisted of just walking around through the jungles, no enemy contact, and them just discovering things that were being used by the enemy in one way, shape, or form. And so here they find a rice cache um, and a small trail. And so that's what Apache, the Apache teams report out. Uh, so in the log, at second platoon and third platoon from Charlie Company have moved further out from the fire base. You can see one's headed south, one's headed northeast. So we'll see where their patrol route for the day takes them. And then um, another thing that happens early in the mornings on most days is there's this natural kind of uh, contraction of the units in the field. So at night they would send out these ambush patrols or SRPs. Some would stay out there to kind of perform the screen. And then in the morning, those same elements that were out would move back to the company perimeter, or if they were elements of a platoon, move back to the platoon perimeter, consolidate, and then maybe go back out again, or, or a different patrol with, with uh, same designation, but different men would go out again. So uh, Alpha Company, these two SRPs that were located kind of close together, they actually come back to the fourth platoon uh, night defensive position and uh, join back in with, with a little bit larger element. Um, first platoon, so another one, like a, a, con, a contracting event. First platoon of Bravo Company had been out quite a ways away from the company perimeter, so they also moved back, and that closure happens at 0930. So they had been on the move, I'm sure, for an hour or so, uh, would be needed to cover this one kilometer of distance, but up a very steep hill. So then uh, another check-in from 2nd Platoon of Bravo Company. Didn't move very, very far. Um, but they didn't move far for a reason. It's because they found something, and so that report it makes it in the log. So at 057-324, this is at about 9.50 in the morning. They have found a bunker, five and a half feet by six by eight, with wood overhead cover uh, and empty. So nothing in it, but an overhead cover bunker position. And, and typically American units, if they built bunkers in an area and then they moved out, they would destroy anything that they had built. Uh, they'd fill foxholes, they'd take down bunkers, remove overhead cover, so that way the NVA or the VC couldn't use them. So when a, an American unit stumbles upon one, it's most likely was an MVA uh, constructed or VC uh, constructed uh, bunker. Uh, there's also a note that says Lieutenant Colonel Larkin and Major Fried are airborne for visual reconnaissance. So Lieutenant Colonel Larkin uh, is the battalion commander and Major Fried is the battalion um, operations officer. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Xavier, uh, Richard Xavier Larkin, was a 1952 graduate of West Point, and he had taken over the battalion in late 1968. And um, Major David Fried was actually a uh, 1959 West Point graduate, and he was the battalion operations officer, so he kind of oversaw the day-to-day -day, uh, maneuver of different units around the field. His, his responsibility and it did also entail reviewing and often recording the events in the logs that I am uh, reading from or, or getting information from. And his signature is on each of these logs where when he was the battalion commander, or I mean the battalion uh, operations officer. So those two uh, Bravo Company units make it a little further away from the firebase. And third platoon finds something at 058299. That's right here. They find an old sleeping position made out of old dry bamboo, 10 foot by 20 foot by 8 foot, uh, but no significant trails in the area, no fresh tracks, no signs of recent activities. So who knows? It could be, you know, it could have been some NVA or VC, um, you know, camp area. It may also have just been some kind of structure built by the locals in this area. Now that you can kind of tell from this map, but these little black dots indicate 
uh, residences or, or I said not residences but just structures and uh, so there's definitely some population in this area um, but not thick and who knows what it was like you know we're 1969 the war's been kind of raging for a couple years many of these people I'm sure had moved out uh, into other areas uh, maybe into Pleiku uh, just to kind of get out of the countryside and get away from the combat areas All right, the next thing that happens is uh, fourth platoon, which it gathered up its two uh, short range patrols, moves back to the Alpha Company perimeter. So Alpha Company has mostly consolidated uh, and they're ready to begin their day. So next uh, thing that happens that's in the log that's pretty interesting is that Delta Company uh, down here reports that Colonel Knight has just departed their, loca their location. Colonel Hale H. Knight was the brigade commander of 1st Brigade, 4th Infantry Division. So he's the brigade commander in charge of uh, the, all the units, um, the, the units that he's in charge of, one of which includes the 3rd of the 12th. So uh, Colonel Hale Knight's a pretty interesting figure. He's actually a three-war veteran. Like, like many senior leaders at this point, he had seen service in World War II and Korea. Uh, in World War II, he was actually a, a lieutenant and, and got quite the reputation as a jungle fighter in the Burma campaign. So not maybe your, your typical World War II experience that you'd think of, but, but that is where he kind of cut his teeth on military tactics. And so he is well known and, and was well regarded as a, as a uh, solid combat commander. Interesting that he would you know stop in, as it were, by helicopter to a company perimeter kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. So Delta Company starts to make some movements. They send out a short range patrol, that's SRP-42. Oh, and just before I, uh, before I continue, I didn't mention it, but there is some method to my madness here and the colors mean something. Um, this black, I usually use just a black circle to represent a battalion firebase or a built up area. Uh, Alpha Company is always gonna be red. Bravo Company is always gonna be white. Uh, Charlie Company is always gonna be blue. Delta is going to be green. Apache recon teams are going to be this yellow gold. And then different uh, significant events, if I do have them, uh, I usually try and do some kind of a, a black and red combo uh, just to highlight that. So those are the colors that stick, stick with us. So when you see a green dot and an SRP-42, um, that means it was a Delta Company element. So Bravo Company starts to push further away from the fire support base. They've cataloged whatever they needed to look at here in, the, in that, that spot that 3rd Platoon found. Same with 2nd Platoon. Now they're moving on with their patrol for the day. Uh, Delta Company sends out its 1st Platoon to the north. And Bravo Company sends out their first patrols of the day. Now here's a great, in, a great example of not getting all the information from the log. Uh, they do have patrol number 1 and patrol number 2 going out. But there was a 3rd patrol. Uh, patrol one alpha and i don't know when they left the company perimeter i don't know if they were part of an element that stayed out overnight that it that is all kind of a mystery and so the first grid coordinate that we have for them puts them way out here you know three kilometers away from the uh, bravo company uh, patrol base um bravo company i'm sorry charlie company starts to move again uh, but now they're kind of moving south, so probably what's going to happen here is that uh, this is just a, a big a big sweep or circular patrol route, and they're going to end up back at the firebase. Uh, and you can see that the next item in the log is just that, that they've moved back. And now we have a little bit more movement from the Bravo Company patrols. One gets way further away, and patrol two starts to double back. And Delta Company at this position where they, they're in the log, it notes them at 105.335, they find something. And this is a kind of a long one, but very interesting. So they find an old, they call it a logger site. So company size, uh, which would be about 100 men. Um, a perimeter estimated to be about six months old. They found old sleeping hooches, five foot by three foot by four, and one foot off the ground, um, but all empty. But there's more bamboo cut for more hooches, so they probably found like a, a pile of cut bamboo. 
they also find, and just you know, to make sure that there was no doubt that this wasn't just a few civilians running around making a camping site, this is definitely an MVA or a VC position because they find uh, three 60 millimeter mortar rounds without fuses, and they're going to bring those in. Um, but they also find two, they call it Chicom grenades. That's a just the standard um, stick grenade that the the MVA used. Um, and the patrol leader actually makes a decision that those are too dangerous. They don't want to carry them around. So they're going to blow them up when they leave the area. And they also find some foxholes, four foot by two by four, filled with debris. And then they find a GI st steel pot or a, an American style steel pot, an MVA um, kind of fiber uh, pot. So they have like a, like a, almost like a, um, just a, a thinner fiber material um, helmet, an MVA canteen. They found a set of old black pajamas, they call them. That's that new kind of stereotypical Viet Cong black uniform. Uh, some torn old bandages, possible blood stains on them. They also found a bunch of caves. And uh, it's interesting because you can't really tell but this this is a pretty steep area. There's some really the tighter the contour lines are together, the steeper the terrain. So I'm sure this whole area was filled with caves, uh, naturally occurring caves that the that the MVA would use to hide uh, hide out in and 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 uh, possibly store things. And so one thing that they did find in there was 100 rounds of AK-47 ammunition. It did look to be kind of damaged. Maybe it's the discards, whatever unit was there you know, found you know, ammo that was no good. And so they left it there, but they're going to bring Delta company is going to bring that ammo back in uh, with them. They also found uh, seven graves. And so this is a, a piece of kind of the day to day lives of American soldiers in Vietnam that doesn't get a lot of uh, publicity and it, probably for good reason, because it's not very nice to talk to talk about. But, uh, you know, the U.S. leadership was very concerned about body count. Um, that was their kind of main statistic they used to tell whether they were winning the war. And so when American maneuver units would find graves out in the jungles, they would often dig them up to see if there was anybody in them. And so that's what Delta Company is tasked with. They find seven graves and they dig them up. One body in each grave, completely decomposed. So these are most likely not um civilians these are most likely uh, vc or mva soldiers that died probably in the years past or six months well you know we don't know when uh, but this area has been you know people have been been fighting in this area for quite some time uh, so that's that's what they had to do and that was at this spot right here there's no signs of recent activity um but it did show signs of being under a uh, mortar attack there were definite signs that this area had been hit by mortars at some point. So recon finishes their sweeps. They're up here in that, that um, recovering that rice that they found. And they while they were looking at that rice, they also sent out sweeps to just see what was in the area. They don't find anything. So they start to bag that rice up and get it ready for extraction. So another kind of note is that often rice, if it was found in the field in large quantities, uh, sometimes it'd be destroyed in place, dumped in a river, whatever, um, denial of, you know, food for the enemy. But oftentimes, if they could, they would extract it and then they would distribute it to maybe a South Vietnamese army unit, maybe displaced civilians. All right, so that's the end of that Bravo company or the uh, Apache units um, in the log anyway, that they're still out there, but We'll move on to 1st Platoon, moves further away from that cave site. 1st uh, Platoon, a Delta company, sorry. And Bravo Company. Um, oh, Bravo Company, or Bravo Company. Well, I lost my place there on my, on my daily journal, apologize about that. Um, Alpha Company is moved off of the hilltop that they were on and moves to the next hilltop south. Delta Company's first platoon moves further away. And Charlie Company's second platoon starts to make their way back to the fire support base. Another grid here, a check in by first platoon of Delta Company. Um, that happens at about 1305. 
sorry, 1310. So they've they've moved quite a bit. They're about a kilometer, a kilometer and a quarter away from where they started. And next thing that we have is we have got a couple of check-ins from Delta Company patrols where I, I don't know where they came from, but this is where they, they check in. So this is all happening right around 1400 hours. These two Delta Company uh, elements check in, but I don't know where they came from. Another occurrence is that Bravo Company Patrol 1, uh, either they they discovered this and didn't report it and moved on further, or maybe they doubled back. But at this grid coordinate right here, where the right there, um, it says that they have found eight hooches, four by six by eight, made of bamboo, and then three smaller bunkers in the rocks with rock overhead cover. Um, and a trail running east to west, uh, two to three feet wide, used in the last week, can hold, and the bunkers can hold about four to five uh, individuals. So we are discovering quite a bit of enemy structures and positions in this area. Charlie Company checks in at 1410 uh, down here, and they also have made another discovery. Uh, they have found three hooches, four by six by four, a bird cage, two baskets of rice, freshly harvested, um, and about 600 pounds of rice, freshly harvested, and a sleeping mats, two cases of fresh water, um, and those hooches, uh, they're, they're actually raised. They're about three feet off the ground. So this sounds more like a maybe a civilian encampment rather than a NVA position or a VC position but you know that was one of the you know confusing parts about this war it could have been either or or possibly even both um, Charlie Company 2nd platoon returns back to the fire support base and another report of Colonel Knight uh, entering the the area, he actually lands at the battalion fire base and checks in there. So Alpha Company Patrol Number Four checks in at this grid at about 1450, but I don't know how they got there. I don't know where they started. Um, I I think actually what happened is that Alpha Company, the main body of Alpha Company, moved down to this grid but they must have left some elements here um, and this is going to come into play the next day and i'll talk about that when i talk about the plan summary for the next day um and then third platoon of charlie company makes their way back to the firebase their patrol day is done this uh patrol one alpha from um, bravo company actually moves quite a bit to the east and starts to make their way back towards the company perimeter First platoon of Delta Company moves out and takes up a position here. And a report from third platoon of Delta Company. Again, not noted in the long in the log until this very moment. So that is at 1710. They say that that's where Delta Company's third platoon is and Delta Company's first platoon is. I know how first platoon got there, but I don't necessarily know how third got there. I would I would assume by the naming conventions that this three Charlie and three Bravo uh, elements were, were part of third platoon, but, but I can't confirm that for sure. And one more report from Bravo Company, uh, a patrol number four, which again, I don't know <clears throat> when or where it started from. Most likely, well, it, it started from Bravo Company's but position, but I don't know when. And it finds another sleeping position here. Approximately uh, used two to three days ago. And there's some expended 51 caliber rounds and um, expended SKS rounds that are two to three wo weeks old. So this was definitely a position that was used at some point. Uh, and at that, that 51 caliber, that is a anti-aircraft um, mounted gun that the MVA or the VC would use to try and shoot down American uh, helicopters as they flew past. And that, I believe, Oh, and then, yeah, there's uh, those two units, one Alpha and one Bravo, or Patrol 1 and Patrol 1 Alpha make their way back to the Bravo Company perimeter.
And that third platoon element from Delta Company down here also brings themselves back to the, the perimeter. So that was all the moving pieces. And so now what I want to look at is at the end of the day, they list in the log a, a summary of where everybody's going to be. And this is what it shows. So some elements, it matches up perfectly with where we last saw them logged you know, in, the day, in the chronological list. Others are brand new, and, and I, I don't know how they got there, um, exact route they got there. I know how they got there. They got there on their feet. Um, so we'll start with uh, Charlie Company down here outside the FSB. So a couple of ambush or four ambush patrols are pushed out uh, here, 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 and here, designated one through four. Ambush patrols were just sent out kind of as a screen for the fire support base. The hope is that if there was somebody moving in to attack the fire base, they would stumble upon the ambush patrol before they uh, hit the fire base. And so most of them are along trail systems. This one you can see is on this east-west trail, another east-west trail here. Uh, AP4 is right, it looks like a junction of this trail and a river. And then AP2 is right along this stream or river. That's Charlie Company, Delta Company, kind of working our way north here. Sends out um, four different SRPs. And first platoon is still out here on this hilltop. So I don't know it, what element each one of these came from. Most likely um, this SRP came from first platoon, which is be the four one four meaning Delta Company, the one meaning first platoon. But that's I'm not certain. That's just what I'm kind of guessing. Alpha Company uh, minus actually now because they've left two of their platoons here. So the, the company headquarters element and two platoons are here and first and second platoon are here. Uh, Apache unit uh, Apache teams have stayed in that same position where they made that discovery. And Bravo Company has kind of scattered itself all over the place, has the main bulk of the company here um, up on Chuar Pond, but their first platoon element is down um, on this other kind of finger that shoots out this way. And there's several different um, SRPs. There's 2-1 out here, 2-3, 2-4, 2-5, and 2-7. So that is the kind of layout of the battalion on the night of January 15th of 1969. So the plan summary, so this again was the night locations for the 15th, but the plan summary for the 16th, the next day is, is a pretty big plan. They got, they got big things in motion here. So they are actually going to move the fire base from this location here and they're going to, they're going to fly all the elements that are there and uh, the infrastructure that's needed up to this uh, location where first and second platoon are of Alpha Company. So that's what first and second are kind of holding down the fort. And this area is going to be developed into the new fire support base for the battalion. So in order to do that, they got to kind of lay, lay in the plans for that. So there's notes in the log that say that um, on 16 January, the 6th to the 29th FA is going to need eight um, slicks or, or Hueys and 13 hooks or Chinook helicopters in order to get the unit, the guns, and their ammo from here up to here. Headquarters and mortars are gonna need five um, hooks, so five Chinook uh, sorties and 10 Huey sorties or trips. A sortie is one trip. Um, and basically, their Charlie Company is going to come up here, secure the the or Charlie Company is going to stay here and secure the pickup zone. Obviously, they don't want to leave you know leave the the headquarters elements undefended while this happens. So Charlie Company is going to secure the pickup zone. Alpha Company is going to secure the landing zone, um, and and that is the kind of the the job for those two units for the day. Delta Company is going to continue to conduct search and destroy operations in the AO. Um, and they're actually going to uh, focus a little bit on the eastern side of this ridge down towards the Doc Paiu River. Um, and then, yeah, that is it. Recon's going to continue to screen. Bravo Company is going to uh, remain on Hill 1304. That's this Chuar Pond. And they're going to 
continue search and destroy missions and they actually they do pick out uh, a specific location that they want to check is 105413 that's 105413 that's where these two SRPs are so they want to emphasis um, and really patrol this draw area so probably you know because those splint those spent casings that were found uh, they're interested to see what else is there and that is it for the battalion's uh, plans for the next day just continue uh, search and destroy operations and this big fire support base move That's it. Uh, as always, these are recorded in honor of the hundreds of men that ser proudly served in the 3rd Battalion, 12th Infantry in Vietnam from 1966 to 1970. Steadfast and loyal. That is the 4th Infantry Division motto. Braves always first. That's the 3rd Battalion, 12th Infantry Regiment's motto. The information used to generate these reports was primarily pulled from the 3rd of the 12th Infantry S3 Operations Daily Journals, which were retrieved from the National Archives College Park, Maryland in 2021 and 2022. Thanks. Uh, if you like this video and you're watching on YouTube, feel free to subscribe, uh, comment, tell me what I can do better. I know I'm not great at these things. I'm just kind of uh, making it up as I go along. Uh, and I'll try and actually work in some better graphics and things like that as the days go by. Thanks.